good. Shalom. 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 I want to start off by giving all praises to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Rakakodash. Double honors to the apostles and elders at Great Millstone. Peace and blessings to the Akim, teaching about the mind while I'm not. That's the sincerity and truth. It's the Great Millstone Dallas branch, and uh, we're here for another class. Uh, what we wanted to get into today is the transfiguration, the importance of it, uh, the significance of it, and <laughs> prove that it was ushering in other things, you know? When the Lord said, this is my son, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased, he said it twice. He said it in uh, uh, after John the Baptist baptized Jehovah Shai, letting you know that the priesthood of Aaron was going to move to the order of Melchizedek from that point. Yeah. Right? And then uh, in the transfiguration, which is going to be the basis of this lesson, it was, it was, it was let known that uh, when Jehovah Shai transfigured himself into uh, Moses and Elijah, and Peter was like, okay, well, what are we going to do? We're going to do, a, uh, we're gonna do a, shrine, a shrine to them. The Heavenly Father intervened again. This is my son in whom I'm well pleased. Right? So from the, the, the Levitical priesthood to this is my son in, in, in whom I'm well pleased, listen to him. The law, the prophets, all that is all wrapped up in my son. And the scriptures also say that we joint heirs. So eventually what we fight for is this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. To these are my beloved sons in whom I will please. Hear ye them, starting with Yahweh Shai. You know? So what we want to do is we want to get into the uh, we want to get into all the chapters that touch on the transfiguration. Some in the KJV, some in the NLT. We got a couple commentaries. You see, Lord willing, this thing will be edifying. So uh let's go. With, uh, let's start with uh Matthew 17. Start at Matthew 17 and 2 first. Uh, you want the KJV first? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got it. I'm going to pull this word for transfigured, uh, transfigured, but you can go ahead and read, brother. Uh, St. Matthew 17 and, and, and 2. You don't want to start at the top? Might as well. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, St. Matthew 17, start right at the top. It says, and after six days, Yahweh shot taking Peter, James, and John, his brother, and bringing them up into a high mountain apart and was transfigured before them. Mm-hmm. And his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as the light. All right, I'm gonna say that word for transfigured is a uh, metamorpho, right? To change into another form, to transform, to transfigure. Hamashiach's appearance was changed and was uh, resplendent with divine brightness on the mount of the transfiguration. You see, and this was the Lord came in the flesh. He worked his miracles. He did these different things, but he was in human flesh. So this was one of those accounts where he showed his power, the power that you can expect to see when he come back. He showed that type of power by transfiguring himself into John, I mean, uh, into uh, Elijah and Moses. You see? And Moses represent the law. Elijah represent the prophets. You see? But Yahweh Shai, it's combined, all that is combined in Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai is everything. Mm -hmm. You see? And that's the way his heavenly father set it up. Yahweh Shai set it up for Yahweh Shai to be that man. You know? That's right. That's right. Hey, if I may, because mm -hmm. it was also spoken of in a sentence in Deuteronomy the 18th chapter. Matter of fact, if I may get it. Get it. Yeah. Because that account right there confirmed Yahweh Shai's divinity to those men, which is when we go into that account, which we're going to read. Yahweh Shai told them not to tell anybody at that time. Because they had to believe all faith. Those three men that were up there with them believed on faith. And afterward, Yahweh Shab revealed himself to that. But let's go to the point here in Deuteronomy chapter uh, 18. <clears throat> Salakia. Let's see. 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 let us it said, the Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee, of thy brethren, like unto me, and unto him ye shall hearken. All right, and Yahweh Shai, when he came on the scene, that's exactly what was enacted during his transfiguration. He was transfigured, and it was spoken from the sky that this is all you're going to have to listen to, you know? <clears throat> that's right. Let's go back to uh, Matthew. Kind of, this is back in uh, St. Matthew 17. And uh, and two, 
and says, and was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as the light. And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elias talking with him. Then answered Peter and said unto Yahweh Shah, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If thou wilt, let us make here three tabernacles, one for thee, and one for Moses, and one for Elias. While he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. That cloud, you know what that cloud, that cloud is a chariot. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Also, mm -hmm. look and tell you how they yeah. went into the chariot yeah. during this account. You know? But the Heavenly Father said, look, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Hear ye him. This is at the end of the ministry. You know what I'm saying? Before the Lord was sacrificed. Moses was there. Elijah was there. They had, they had, they had walked in their life. It, it, it ain't no coincidence that Peter is there too. Mm -hmm. You see? Peter was the one to say, hey, you want to do a shrine for them and you? And the Lord told Peter, no, 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 hold on, hold on. This is my beloved son in whom I will please. Hear ye him. That same thing happened with the account Sha'ar just brought out. You know what I'm saying? It was Moses back then. And it was the Heavenly Father saying, look, this is who you're going to need to listen to. Right. Nothing new under the sun, right? Yo, because when they talk about <laughs> Moses uh, came from the, uh, Mount Sinai, his face uh, shined. Mm -hmm. But then they talk about, I forget where it is, they talk about it starting to get like diminished, basically diminished, mm -hmm. you know? Because mm -hmm. that represents that something will come greater. Right. Mm -hmm. You know? Right. That's right. That's right. I'm going to read this in the commentary. And then uh, read those same verses he just read in the NLT afterwards. All right, this is the commentary. Uh, this is the uh, My Sword app Bridgeway commentary. All right, it says, Yahweh's transfiguration took place on a high mountain, possibly Mount Hermon, which was, uh, which was not far from Caesarea Philippi. The event was a revelation of Hamashiach's glory and was witnessed by only three chosen apostles. In coming into the world as a human being, Yahweh has, uh, has laid his divine glory aside. You see, he wasn't there to show all that, you know? And whenever he did show that power, he gave the credit to the Father. Mm. You see? It says, but, uh, but now it reappeared briefly through a human body. It gave an indication of the glory he would receive uh, after, he had finished, uh, after he had finished the work that he came to do. Now, mm. keep in mind, right before he showed this power, he let them know that he was going to have to die. Mm -hmm. You got something? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because when you go into the account in Luke 9, like when you read that account of it, when Yahweh is talking to Elijah and Moses, they're actually talking about that deceased. Mm -hmm. They're talking about him, him having to get it? put to the spirit yeah, world. You, you go ahead and pull it. Okay, I got it right here. And I'll, I'll read that in an LT. Mm -hmm. This is the book of Luke chapter 9, verse 28 in the NLT version. And it says, about eight days later, Yahweh took Peter, John, and James up on a mountain to pray. And as he was praying... The appearance of his face was transformed and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly, two men, Moses and Elijah, appeared and began talking with Yahweh Shai. They were glorious to see. And they were speaking about his exodus from this world, mm. which was about to be fulfilled in Jerusalem. Just as you mm. said, that happened before he went to Jerusalem and it actually was exercised. It was done. That's right. You know, that's right. Uh, let's see here. And it says, and Peter and the others had fallen asleep. When they woke up, they saw Yahweh's glory and the two men standing with them. Right. You know, that's it. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm going to continue in this commentary. It says, Moses and Elijah appeared with Yahweh during his transfiguration, possibly to symbolize that the law of the prophets found their, uh, the law and the prophets found their fulfillment in him. Which is why Yahweh said what he right. said. This is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Mm -hmm. Right? It says he was one of he was one uh yeah, he was the one to whom the entire Old Testament pointed. So for right. all the people that think that he wasn't in the Old Testament, he played a huge role in Absolutely. the Old Testament. Absolutely. Matter of fact, somebody pull a volume of the book. Okay. Whether you get it in Hebrews or in Psalms, yeah, either one is cool. Okay. But him with him coming in the volume of the book, this is proof. You know? Go ahead. This is a. Uh, sorry, this is the book of Psalms, chapter forty, and verse seven, and it reads, "Then said I, Lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me." You see, he that believeth on me, as the scriptures has said, mm -hmm. out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. That rivers of living water being this truth, 
you know, in all sincerity. That's what's going to pour out of the men that believe on the Lord, as the scripture has said. But then you got Israelites in 15 pound garments that don't believe in the Old Testament. But whatever. Right. It says he was the one to whom the old uh, Old Testament pointed. They talked with Yahweh about his death, uh, his coming death, confirming what Yahweh had recently told the apostles. The Messiah had to die before he could enter, uh, enter into his glory. You see, and this is a portion of it being shown on that uh, mount. Like we said, the first time the Lord said, this is my beloved son in whom I will please hear ye him. It was at the beginning of the ministry. The second time he said it, mm -hmm. it was uh, uh, at the end right. of the ministry. That's right. And That's just right. to triple down on it, the Lord put the spirit on John to write 1 John chapter 5, going into Yahweh's testimony of his son. Mm -hmm. So in that, when we, when we pull that, you're going to see how the Lord tripled down on it. You know what I'm saying? So that's three times that the Lord said, this is my beloved son in whom I will please. The third time and not so many words, but it was more embellished when John wrote it down. That's right. Mr. Okay. And it's beautiful. It was spoken in the Old and the New Testament. Mm -hmm. Like you said, just for all those that don't believe in it, like it was confirmed to you even before he came. Man, that's heavy right there, man. That's right. A heavy part. Read in the NLT real quick. Yeah. This is Matthew chapter 17, verse 1 in the NLT. It says, Six days later, Yahweh Shah took with him Peter and the brothers, James and John, and led them up a high mountain where they were alone. As they looked on, a change came over Yahweh Shah. His face was shining like the sun, and his clothes were dazzling white. Then the three disciples saw Moses and Elijah talking with Yahweh Shah. So Peter spoke up and said to Yahweh Shah, Lord, how good it is that we are here. If you wish, I will make three tents here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was talking, a shining cloud came over them. Mm -hmm. And a voice from the cloud said, This is my own dear son with whom I am pleased. Listen to him. You see that? Mm. You see that? He said it twice. At the beginning of the ministry, right. at the end of the ministry. Right. You know what I'm saying? You got something? No, I was going to say, it said a shining cloud in that one. Yeah. Why would a cloud be shining? It's a chariot. You, know? you see? And then when you read it, uh, when you read the, uh, the version in Luke, yeah. it talks about how they walk into yeah. the cloud. I mean, I still can if you want oh, yeah. to pull oh, that yeah. part out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It might as well pull it off. God. Oh, you're talking about right now? Kind yeah. of well, yeah. let's go back to it. This is back in the book of Luke, chapter 9, verse 32. And I'm continuing in the NLT version. Mm -hmm. And it says, Peter and the others had fallen asleep. When they woke up, they saw Yahweh's glory and the two men standing with them. As Moses and Elijah were started to leave or starting to leave, Peter, not even knowing what he was saying, blurred out, Master, it's wonderful for us to be here. Let's make three shelters this memorial. So he wasn't even, he, went, he was moved to say that. Yeah. He uttered that, yeah. <laughs> you know. It says, one for you one for Moses and one for Elijah. But even as he was saying this, a cloud overshadowed them and terror gripped them as of the cloud covered them. Then a voice from the cloud said, this is my, uh, Salakim. So not, not only is the cloud shining, but it's talking too. Mm-hmm. Right. Right? <laughs> mm-hmm. Go ahead. This is my son, my chosen one. Listen to him. Or translated, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. That's right. Hear ye him. It says in verse 36, when the voice finished, Yahweh was there alone. They didn't tell anyone at that time what they had seen. So if you read that in the KJV, it goes into them walking into the cloud. It didn't necessarily say that in um, the uh, NLT. But let me, I'll just read verse 34 in the KJV mm -hmm. just for clarity on that part. Yeah. So this is Luke 9 and 34 in the KJV. While he thus spake, there came a cloud and overshadowed them. And they feared as they entered into the cloud. That's what I'm saying, man. What kind of cloud can you walk into? Yeah, right. You know, you can't just walk in, try walking into a cloud that's not a chariot. You're gonna go. You're gonna go right through that thing. You know what I'm saying? Because clouds ain't. You know what I'm saying? They ain't solid like that. All right. I'm gonna go back to this commentary. It says the apostles were confused about what was happening, but the Father's voice from heaven told them that it was a, uh, it was an expression of his satisfaction. With the entire ministry of Yahweh Shai. You see? This is my son and whom I will please. Yeah, I know you got respect for Elijah and Moses. Those are my men too. But this is my son. You see? 
He's putting him above everything else. Was uh, 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 Yahweh was above of the angels, right? You know what I'm saying? But he came in the flesh. Mm -hmm. That's what earned he earned his spot. That's what Jake failed to realize. You know what I'm saying? The transfiguration is proof that the Lord earned his spot. So all these all these naysayers and all these doubters talking about what they ain't gonna do, and you know what I'm saying? It's the, Lebr the, the he, he ain't no Levite, so he gonna be under the Levitical priesthood. Uh, stop. That's disrespectful than a motherfucker. Stop. I can say Yahweh Shah represents a greater glory than the law and the right. prophets. Because that's, that's right. what that represents right there. That's Moses, right. the law, and Elijah, you know, mm -hmm. the school of the prophets. He, Absolutely. His glory just overshadows all that's of right. that. That's you know right. what I'm saying? And the reason why, the reason why, one of the reasons why the Lord was well pleased with Yahweh Shah in that flesh is because he fulfilled the law. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? He was perfect in the law. You know? Right. And Aaron is of the elect too. But Aaron needs Yahweh Shah. That's Don't right. get it twisted. You know what I'm saying? Right. Aaron didn't resist them to blood. Right. They talked that shit to Aaron. He was a golden calf making. You know what I'm saying? He folded. He folded. Yep. Your house shot didn't. So of course. You know what I'm saying? How about how about uh, uh, uh Melchizedek, high priest in the heavens? The prayer says, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Right. That's right. Heaven was here before the earth, dummy. Yeah, the scripture said in Hebrews, it was a shadow of things to come, being the law. All right. So at that time, it was important, but it was act again, it was a shadow. You know what I'm saying? It was an outlining of what already exists in the heavens. You know, hey, when the Lord spoke to Moses on Mount Sinai, he told him that was a pattern of things that already exist in the heavens. Exactly. And he wanted to, to fashion it after that pattern. That's right. That's <clears throat> you right. Know? What they received was heavenly right there, man. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah, that was and, a heavenly vision. And, and, and like we were saying, when 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 matter of fact, let's pull let's pull it where uh, John the Baptist baptized Yahweh Shai, and the Lord said, you know what I'm saying? Let's pull that because what it was that was uh, that, that that was a transference from the Levitical right, priesthood because right. John was a descendant of uh, Aaron. Mm -hmm. sure you see, was. grew up knowing it because his father was a priest. Mm -hmm. So when he said I must de uh, I must decrease and he must increase, what was he talking about? He was talking about the Levitical priesthood being upgraded. You see? Mm -hmm. Let's go. This is Matthew chapter 3. I'm sorry. Yeah, chapter 3, verse 16. And it says, matter of fact, I'm going to start at verse 15. God, I'll start at 13. It says, Then cometh Yahweh Shai from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee. And comes thou to me? That's what I'm saying. So that that right there is the beginning of the transference. You see? Mm -hmm. I need to be baptized by you. Yeah, you leave, man. And your house, I said, look, according to prophecy, let these things be. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? If you don't baptize me, we're not taking on that transition. Because it's, it's according to the law, too. Mm -hmm. Like, Yahweh Shah perfected the law. That's right. So that's it was a necessity, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. that the scripture may be fulfilled as well. That's, that's right. right. That's right. And when you go into this account, before all this even took place, you had people of the sects of the scribes and the Pharisees and such that went up to John asking him who he was. And they even asked if he was the Messiah. Mm -hmm. So ironically enough, later on, Yahweh Shai came to be baptized. And that voice, which we're about to read, said what it said to confirm it, you know. But this is back in Matthew chapter 3, verse 15. And it says, And Yahweh answering said unto him, Suffer it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Mm -hmm. Then he suffered him, just as what you said, Yadikah. That's right. Verse 16. And Yahweh when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water. And lo, the heavens were opened unto him. And he saw the spirit of the Most High descending like a dove and lightning upon him. Man, that's got to be heavy man. when you sit down and picture that, bro. Man. Like, sheesh, man. That's what I'm saying. And, 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 and we're not downplaying the Levitical priesthood. We're not downplaying Aaron. Right. We're not downplaying any of that. But even Yahweh Shah says, speaking of Solomon, it's one greater than Solomon exactly. that's here now. Exactly. So if you're greater than Solomon, then you clearly you're greater than Aaron. Mm -hmm. That's right. Like, come on, man. You really, you really don't want to give Yahweh Shai his glory. Yeah, th through the Levitical priesthood, the high priest had authorization to enter into the holiest of the holies one time a year. 
through Yahweh Shai, we have continual access through the holies of holies, through the Holy Spirit. That's greater, man. You know? Oh, you're going to throw out the book of Hebrews. You're going to get rid of the book of Hebrews right. because it puts the stamp on Yahweh Shai. Mm -hmm. Melchizedek. Right. You see? That's wicked as hell, man. Mm -hmm. That's wicked as hell. Yeah. And you being that wicked with your fringes on. Let's right. go. I'm starting to get mad now. Verse 17. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. That's what I'm saying. The heavenly father said, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. Hear ye him. He said the same thing back with Moses. Mm -hmm. It's going to be an angel that you're going to have to hearken to. Right. Who is that angel, bro? Mm -hmm. Like unto to Moses. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Bro, this is... Aaron is second in command. Aaron was second in command during that time. Right. He even got punished for talking shit about Moses. The Lord got on his ass. Turned his sister's lepers. The Lord was pissed off at Aaron about that. Yep. You know what? Actually. Paul, what you looking for? God, I got another one really quick. Just yeah. going into. Oh, we're pulling the, all this meat off this bone. Yeah, the glory of the priesthood being changed. Mm -hmm. You know, and this is in Sirach. This is Sirach chapter uh, 45, and you know what? Uh, I'm going to just jump straight to it. I'm going to start at verse 20, and it says, but he made Aaron more honorable, just given honor because there is honor still to the Levitical priesthood. Right. So I wanted to start on that point, but he made Aaron more honorable and gave him an heritage and divided unto him the first fruits of the increase, especially he prepared bread in abundance for they eat of the sacrifices of the Lord which he gave unto him and his seed. Howbeit, in the land of the people, he had no inheritance. Neither had he any portion among the people, for the Lord himself is his portion and inheritance. The third in glory, Phinehas, the son of Eleazar, which is the grandson of Aaron, mm -hmm. it says, because he had zeal and fear of the Lord and stood up with good courage of heart, when the people were turned back and made reconciliation for Israel, Therefore, there was a covenant of peace made with him that he should be the chief of the sanctuary and of his people and that he and his posterity should have the dignity of the priesthood forever. Right mm -hmm. now, let's go into verse 25, according to the covenant made with David, the son of Jesse. So it jumps right from Eleazar, the high priest to David next. Right. It says, according to the covenant made with David, son of Jesse of the tribe of Judah, that the inheritance of the king should be his posterity alone. So the inheritance of Aaron should also be unto his seed. Yep. So you see that that's that it tells you right there in Sirach that that was going to translate, you know, to the, the, the kingly line of David mm -hmm. and rest in Yahweh Shai, you know, which again, it goes back to the order of Melchizedek anyway. Yep. If you can receive it through the spirit, that's what that's talking about. The order of Melchizedek. Right. You know, that's what I'm saying. And Timothy mm -hmm. wrote Timothy wrote Hebrews scribing for Paul. So you do know who wrote it. Yeah. You know? Just like just like uh Baruch scribe what Jeremiah had to say. Mm -hmm. Same thing. Not saying that those are the same people, I'm just saying it's the same concept. Right, right. Okay? Absolutely. Let's get back to uh Matthew. Kind of going back to Matthew, the 17th chapter, and the uh I'll just read five again. Come. It says, while he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and behold, a voice out of the cloud which said, this is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased, hear ye him. And when the disciples heard it, they fell on their face and were sore afraid. And Yahweh came and touched them and said, arise and be not afraid. Mm -hmm. And when they had lifted up their eyes, they saw no man save Yahweh only. And as they came down from the mountain, Yahweh shall charge them, saying, Tell the vision to no man until the Son of Man be risen again from the dead. That's what I'm saying. So keep that on the low. Keep that on the low. It's going to come a time where you're going to share this. But for right now, this is just for y'all. You know what I'm saying? And then you get into when Peter was talking about a more sure word of prophecy. He, was, he, he referred to the transfiguration on the mount. You see? So him being, him being there, being the head of the church, it led them to... Be more, uh, be more fervent to push. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of people thought that Yahweh Shah was just some dude. They saw everything that they needed to see to be willing to die for this truth. 
You know what I'm saying? And that's how we see Yahweh Shai. You know what I'm saying? We know what it is. Let's keep on reading that chapter. Because it's also gonna jump in, it's gonna also jump into uh 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 Elijah and John the Baptist, that whole situation. You know? Go ahead. It says uh Matthew 17 and 10, and his disciples asked him, saying, Why then say the scribes that Elias must first come? And Yahweh Shah answered and said unto them, Elias truly shall first come and restore all things. Mm -hmm. But I say unto you that Elias is come already. All right, check this out. This is the same commentary. It says, uh, uh, let me see. Yeah, it says, when the transfiguration was over and Yahweh Shai's appearance returned to normal, he again told the apostles that they would not get to reveal what they learned. The vision of Elijah prompted the apostles to ask if Elijah would come before the Messiah. If Yahweh Shai was the Messiah, why had not Elijah already come? Yahweh Shai replied that John the Baptist was the promised Elijah. You see? He, he, he told him straight up, flat out. It don't say the spirit of Elijah. It don't, no, 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 no. It say what it say. You believe on the Lord as the scripture has said, out of your belly is going to flow rivers of living water. Right? So it, the Lord told him straight up. All right? That was it on that. Now read it in the NLT. Huh. <clears throat> this is Matthew 17. I started at verse 6 in the NLT. It says, when the disciples heard the voice, they were so terrified that they threw themselves face downward on the ground. Yahushua came to them and touched them. Get up, he said. Don't be afraid. So they looked up and saw no one there but Yahushua. As they came down the mountain, Yahushua ordered them, don't tell anyone about this vision you have seen until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. You see that? You see that? That's what I'm saying. It's, 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 it's order within that. You see? Bro, you can't tell me they didn't want to tell somebody as soon as they saw that. Oh, come on, man. You know what I'm saying? But it, it wasn't time yet. The Lord said, you got to wait till I'm gone. You see? And that's what he did. Uh, somebody get that uh, more sure word of prophecy? Second like I was pulling hey. it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. I was just about to pull it. Because it goes right into the transfiguration right there. Mm -hmm. This is the book of Second Peter, chapter 1. And I'm going to jump straight to it. Salakia. This is 2 Peter chapter 1. I'm going to start at verse like 15. Mm -hmm. And it says, I'm going to go back to the first Peter. All right, my bad. I'm there. And it says, moreover, I will endeavor that ye may be able after my decease. Hey, Shawak, give me one, uh, 1 John 1 and 5. Start at like 9. After my decease, to add these things always in remembrance. For we have not followed cunningly devised fables. We have not followed cunningly devised fables. That's why the Lord say, believe on me. I, I'm, the, the, the book is written about me. I come in the volume of the book. So if you believe on me, as the scripture said, you ain't going to fall for no fables. You ain't, gonna, you ain't got to worry about all that. You know what I'm saying? I'm telling you the truth. You know? And the Heavenly Father doubled down on it. Go ahead. Come. It says, Triple down on it if you add John's writings. That's right. Go ahead. For we have not followed cunningly devised fables. When we made known unto you the power and the coming of our Lord Yahweh Shai and Mashiach, mm -hmm. but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. Mm -hmm. So that he's getting ready to go into the transfiguration. Yep. It says in verse 17, for he received from the most high the father honor and glory. When there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. That's what I'm saying. They saw that. So some, so some two-third Israelite or some Roman couldn't tell them otherwise. Right, right, right. You can't tell them they didn't see that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You can't tell me you didn't see that. So no, uh -uh, we got a more sure word of prophecy. While you guessing, we saw him in that splendor. We heard the Lord say, listen to him. You just talking shit. Go ahead. And this voice which came from heaven, we heard. When we were with him in the holy mount, mm -hmm. and we also, Salaka, and we have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto ye do well that take heed as unto a light that a shines more, in the dark A place. more sure word of prophecy because it was prophesied that the Lord was going to be that. Mm -hmm. Right. That's right. That's it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That, that, that tr The transfiguration fulfilled prophecy for the top three disciples. That's it. To, 
to continue that. Mm hmm. They were eyewitnesses to that prophecy being fulfilled. You know, like we have a more, he, they're saying like literally we have more of a sure word of prophecy because they stay was there. <laughs> That's right. That's why he touched upon them being eyewitnesses uh, a few verses prior to that. Yeah. Go ahead. You finish know? that up. I'll, I'll, I'll cut you off. No, no, no I saw it. Oh. No, I saw it. Good. It says we have also a more sure word of prophecy whereunto you do well that you take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place. Until the day dawn and day star arise in your hearts, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. And that's what I'm saying. Private interpretation is what will have you think that the Levitical priesthood is going to happen in the yeah, kingdom. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? When you go to Revelation 12, I mean, when you go to Revelation 7, it's 12,000 Levites in that roster. Yeah, that's it. Mm -hmm. That's it. How much more you want? Right. How much more do you want? That let you know they wouldn't share the kingdom like Yahweh Shah gonna do. No, not at all. You know what I'm saying? Yahweh Shah say I ain't drinking no more wine until I drink it new with y'all. Absolutely. I'm going to a, prepare a place for y'all. Mm -hmm. And here comes some nigga yeah, yep. with a fucking fitty cap. Keep going, bro. Verse 21. <laughs> for the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, mm -hmm. but holy men. Of the, I'm gonna read that again all yeah, together. Yeah. But holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. Spake as they was moved by the Holy Spirit, man. You see, the men that's moved by the Holy Spirit is gonna glorify Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. The men that's moved by bullshit is gonna do what they do. Right. That's right. You know. Let's get uh uh First John five start at nine. You know what I'm saying? That, that the point will pretty much be made after that. You know what I'm saying? Unless, unless y'all got some more precepts, y'all can bring them. But yeah, I got one yeah. This is First John chapter five, verse nine. It says, "And we receive the witness of men, the witness of the Most High is greater. Mm -hmm. For this is the witness of the Most High, which He hath testified of His Son." I'm gonna get that word witness. Keep on reading. Right. Verse ten: He that believeth on the Son of the Most High hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not the Most High hath made him a liar. That's what I'm saying, man. That's what I'm saying. So, so, so the Lord lying by saying, "This is my son in whom I well please." He didn't say Aaron is. This is my son in whom I well please. He said that for Yahweh Shai. Aaron's Aaron's priesthood, the Levitical priesthood, was a, was a shadow of things to come. You see, Aaron himself didn't have the law, statutes, and, and commandments program in him, right. but he about to. Yeah. Right. You know what I'm saying? And you think Aaron ain't going to be grateful for that? You think Aaron going to be sitting in the side like, shit, what about yeah. my priesthood? Yeah, exactly. No. Yeah, right, right. No. That's right. That is yeah. not how Aaron is going to feel about that, man. That's what I'm saying. And if you're a direct descendant of Aaron, you should feel how he feel about the Lord, nigga. Mm -hmm. If you're a Levite. Like, bro, we don't know what tribes we from, bro. We got an idea. But come on, man. Be real. Be spiritual. You don't know what tribe you from, bro. Right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But to hold on to a tribe to the point to where you're going to disrespect yeah. the Lord? Right. You don't have no, 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 no. We're going to say something about that every time. Mm -hmm. We fully set for the defense of the gospel, homie. Right. So, nah, we ain't letting that shit ride. Mm -hmm. The hell you mean? Your house shot going to be under the Levitical priesthood. He, he was the only one to fulfill the Levitical priesthood. Hey, if I may, Zaquan, Yahweh Shah had to tell Moses on how the Levitical priesthood would be introduced. Come on now. He told him, that was Yahweh Shah that told Moses that. That's what I'm saying. In, in Mount man. Sinai. That was the voice of the Most High, which is Yahweh Shah, the word. Yeah, but you got niggas ripping pages out the Bible yeah, thinking that shit right. gonna suffice. <laughs> Crazy. Hell nah, man. Come on, man. Alright, let me get that uh, word witness. Alright. It's uh I'll let the white boy say it. Strong's G thirty one forty one Marturia. Marturia. Right? And then when you get into the root word, Greek one uh three th uh three one four four. You get into the uh the uh root word. It's uh Martus. Right? It says those who after his example have proved the strength and genuineness of their faith in Hamashiach, in Hamashiach, by undergoing a violent death. You go through what happened to all the disciples who later became apostles. They was all murdered. 
You know what I'm saying? John, uh, uh, John the Revelator ended up dying much later. But all the rest of them, Peter crucified upside down. James thrust through with the sword. You know what I'm saying? Getting, getting their heads chopped off. Why? Because you could not tell them that they did not see what they saw at the right. transfiguration, right. Right. which was a transference from the Levitical priesthood to the order of Melchizedek. You know what I'm saying? And the law, statutes, and commandments, and the prophets all being rolled up into one man, which is that man, Yahweh Shai. That's right. Ain't no nigga finna tell me we can't worship Yahweh Shai. That's right. Go ahead. I got a pretty for you. Excuse me. Uh, this is uh, St. Luke 24 and 44. And he said unto them, this is Yahweh Shai speaking to his disciples. It says, These things, so like it, these are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you. That all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets. Mm -hmm. That transfiguration there you go. represents mm -hmm. the law of Moses and the prophets. There you go. It says, and in the Psalms concerning me. Come on now. Ooh. Come on now. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. You keep keep on. Get, Re get Revelation 22. Then open he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. Back it up. That most sure word of prophecy, man. Mm -hmm. So they're expanded, uh, their knowledge expanded, you know. That's right. Once they got that concept that Yahweh Shah embodied everything, man, that was written in the Le Levitical law, mm -hmm. in the prophets, in the Psalms. It was all him. That's right. That's right. And he properly fulfilled, like you said, the Levitical priesthood. Mm -hmm. The only one. Yep, the only one. The only one. Moses didn't get to see him go to the promised land. Aaron went off. You know what I'm saying? Aaron yeah. didn't. Aaron didn't either. No, he didn't either. Only Joshua <laughs> and Caleb did. You know? You got something? Okay. Break it out. Break it out. Hebrews seven and eleven. If therefore perfection were by the Levitical priesthood, mm. for mm. under oh, we don't know who wrote that, <laughs> so we can't go by it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, nigga. It says, for under it the people received the law. What further need was there that another priest should rise after? The order of Melchizedek and not be called after the order of Aaron? And that's the question. Yep, bring it you know? yeah. Hey, like I say, if another priest because we got to think the Levitical, Levitical priesthood, we was under that for a period of time. But what happened? We constantly going off. Yep. You know, so we needed a, a more assured, assured uh, priesthood, something that we can be uh, grafted into that we won't have to, you know, so we won't be, so we can be set up in perfection. I was the thing, what's that, uh, Jeremiah 31, where it talks about uh, the laws and statutes being put in our inward parts? Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. That same, th those same laws, statutes, and commandments ain't going nowhere. They're going to be programmed in us right. so we can be like Yahweh Shai. Mm -hmm. You think Aaron not going to appreciate that? <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I can only imagine how Aaron felt after he made that golden calf. Yo. Man, there's so many cuts. <laughs> Abraham even paid tithes to Melchizedek before Levi. That's what I'm saying. Even born. Exactly. Come on now. <laughs> Bro, Levi ain't even the firstborn son. Yeah. Reuben was born first. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, come on, bro. You can rip pages out the Bible like you goddamn want to, bro. We're going to use the whole book. That's right. Eat -e all of it. So there was always something greater you know, than that priesthood. It, that was just for a set measure of time. Right. Mm -hmm. You know? But That's there right. was always something before that, man. Because exactly. during the time of Adam, during the time of Adam, the sons of God was just going to walk right. with the Spirit. They was just going to walk with the Lord. It was, it, we, just, we, just, we just lived it out. Right. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't until we fell that it had to be written on stone. Right. And why was it written on stone? You know what I'm saying? Going into the stony heart and the fleshly heart. Right. Another transference. Mm -hmm. Like, bro, we can go all day with this. Go ahead. It says, for the priesthood being changed, there is made of necessity a change also of the law. That's what I'm saying. So who cares if you don't know who wrote it? It's in the book. The word of God is in the Bible, but the Bible ain't the word of God. Shut your dumb ass up. That's the dumbest shit I ever heard from a priest, a deacon. Really, bro? Hey, maybe if y'all repent and take them hats off, y'all can get this, man, because y'all looking bad out there, man. Not bad in front of me. And it, no, no, no. The Lord looking at you like, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You pissing the Lord off to hell with what we, how we feel. You clearly ain't worried about how we feel. That's fine. But the Lord said, feed my sheep if you love me. Right. We ain't giving the sheep now, ladies, and goddamn me, uh, Doritos and shit. No, 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 no. We're giving them this truth. Mm -hmm. You know? 
You got more? I can uh, it says, uh, for, uh, for whom, uh, uh, for he to, uh, of whom those things are spoken pertaining to another tribe of which no man gave attendance at the altar. For it is evidence that our Lord sprang out of Judah, which tribe, uh, tribe Moses spake nothing concerning priesthood. Right? Mm -hmm. And it says, and it is yet far more evident, it's far more evident for that after the similitude of Melchizedek, there arises another priest. There you go. There you go. You know what I'm saying? The Levitical priesthood was for a certain time. Right. You know what I'm saying? And the Lord is almost and, and, and the, the Levitical priesthood, and the, the, those laws, statutes, and commandments is gonna be programmed in us so right. we can be like your Right. You know what I'm saying? You can't you can't just gloss over that shit. Right. Well, not that shit, but you can't just gloss over that. Right. It's nothing wrong with the laws itself, but like it says when you read in Hebrews eight. For finding fault with them. Mm -hmm. Meaning who? Those that couldn't keep it. Right. That's where the problem lies. We couldn't keep it. That's right. You know, the law itself is good if you if there's obedience, if you can keep it. Mm -hmm. You know? And then I'll say in James, it say if you break one commandment, you break all of them. Right. That's what I'm saying. Yahweh shot eliminated that for us. Right. You know what I'm saying? Mercy. Grace. Like Jake don't care about mercy and grace, bro. That law's a burden, bro. You know what I'm saying? The laws ain't grievous. The laws ain't the, the Lord Himself said the laws ain't grievous, but Jake can tell you it's an anchor around your neck. You know what I'm saying? This world ain't fair because you can't sleep with somebody else's woman. This world ain't fair because you know what I'm saying? Bro, Jake done gave heaven a bad rap. What type of nigga don't want to go to heaven? Right. <laughs> you realize what kind of nigga you gotta be to not want to go to heaven? But that's what Jake, that, that's the type of shit Jake be talking. Yeah. You know? So that transference from the Levitical priesthood to the order of Melchizedek, you know what I'm saying? It, 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 was, it, was, it, was, it was set up. It was set up with John the Baptist and Yahweh shot. And the Lord came out of the, he sent the dove, he opened the heavens. Made, he made a big deal out of it. Right. So we're going to make a big deal out of it. That's right, and then he did it again at the end of the ministry before he was done. This is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. But here come a nigga, though. It makes sense why the Lord told him to hide it, man. Yeah. That told him right there. Jake wouldn't believe, you know what I'm saying? Right. the same stuff back then. Heard it, though, said the Lord, the Lord put his stamp on the situation at the beginning of the ministry, at the end of the ministry. Then he had the Lord's best friend write it down so we could read it. Right. I don't know how much more you need. And even if you take the book of Hebrews out of that, you still got that. You still got them three occasions. What, and, and the three that's understanding. And the three represent understanding, if I'm not mistaken. I know four is mercy. You know what I'm saying? So the Lord put it, he put it in the scriptures three times for us to understand it, which we do, because the Lord come in the volume of the book, we actually believe it. You see, it ain't about us, it's about the Lord. It's about the Lord. You know what I'm saying? Jake got it in their head that they could push the Lord out the way. Nah, man. Nah. Matter of fact, pull that precept where it say those that don't want uh, don't want to worship me, bring them here to slay them. Because this is what you're flirting with. You, you flirting with the Lord himself killing you. Running your damn mouth. And then trying to use the scriptures to justify it. No, 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 no. You mangling the scriptures, homeboy. You don't you, you I'm gonna say it say uh, uh, those that believe on me as the scripture has said out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. I don't know what that is flowing out of them niggas. Puss. It ain't living water for sure. Yeah. All right, this is uh, Saint Luke 19 and 27. But those my enemies which would not that I should reign over them Bring hither. That's what I'm saying. So, bro, the Sakari, the Sakari wasn't with you, Howard Shot. Just when you go back into the history. And you done already put it on your record. When you read about the Sakari, you chose to be them. Yeah. We them niggas. That's us. We them niggas. The spirit chose to put them niggas. So you saying, so you saying that you ain't following your house shot like that. You already on record saying we shouldn't worship him. Right. You already on record saying that you the Sakari. So why the fuck should we listen to you? Y'all was in that crucified, crucified bunch. Right. The way y'all acted. Go ahead. 
It says, but those, Luke 19, 27, but those my enemies, which would not that I should reign over them, bring hither and slay them before me. That's what I'm saying, man. You, 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 you flirting with Yahweh Shah himself. Killing you. Why? So you can sell some hats and fringes? Hey, Zakwan, if I may, about the Sakari, another historical fact. The ancient Sakari fled when the siege of Jerusalem came. They the ones right there that was killing, killing their children, killing themselves afterward, and pretty much fled the flock they were sworn to protect. That's During what I'm the saying. Of Jerusalem, they even abandoned their own, their own, their own faith to a degree. <laughs> they abandoned it. That's the history of the ancient of Sakari. Not surprising at all. Yeah. Not surprising at all. So for you to voluntarily attach yourself to that faction, let you know it's bigger than just you know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. You fulfilling prophecy. You know what I'm saying. But we fully set for the defense of the gospel. So anything right. y'all put up that's gonna disrespect you, how about you, how was shy? Y'all gonna have to deal. Y'all gonna have to deal. You know? That's it. Revelation 22. Yeah. Yeah. It's in Revelation chapter 22, verse 18. It says, For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. Y'all done heard the words of the prophecy of this book. We done heard the words in the prophecy of this book. Matter of fact, somebody pulled that precept, uh, uh, not mixed with faith. Yeah. Yeah. We're gonna go to Hebrews again. Go ahead. Huh. This is uh, Hebrews chapter 4 verse 2 It says for unto us was the gospel preached As well as unto them mm -hmm. But the word preached did not profit them Not being mixed with faith in them that heard it You see that? You see that? You see what they teach and you see what we teach? Read on brother It says Revelation 22 and 18 For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book, if any man shall add unto these things, the Most High shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. There you go. That's what I'm saying. You got plagues coming to you if you don't repent. You know what I'm saying? What's that? Uh, 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 rightly dividing the word of truth? Hebrews 4 and 12. Yeah, somebody pull that right quick. It's just further down the verse. Yeah. Might as well just in the same chapter. And then when you look that, when you uh, look that word up, uh, it goes into preaching the word directly and correctly. Yep. You know what I'm saying? This is uh, Hebrews 4 and 12. It says, for the word of the most high is quick. That's good. But the one I'm talking about is in Timothy. Oh, 2 so Timothy. Study to show thyself approved. Study to show thyself approved. It's in that one. Bring that one out too, though. Okay. That's you got a group of Hebrews that discredit the book of Hebrews. <laughs> Bro! <laughs> That's some Hebrew bullshit. Though. Bro! Crazy. <laughs> but that's what I'm saying. If you a Levite, you're supposed to tell what's unclean and what's clean. You're supposed to be the ones teaching everybody. But the it's not it's not Levi Hebrew. Yeah, right. Exactly. Exactly. Make it make sense. Come on, bro. You still just talk too fucking much. I'll let you know. Finish yours. Yeah, finish that one first. This is a Hebrews 4 and 12. It says, For the word of the Lord, for the word of the most high is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. You know what I'm saying? And when that sword hits you, it's either going to make you repent or it's going to fit you more. Right, right. You see? There's only two things that can happen when you get cut. You can either be healed or you can bleed out. Right. Look like Jake Cool with bleeding out. As long as they get fit, as long as their pockets get full first. I don't mind bleeding that long. You only live once, right? I'm a ball out in this life, so shit. Yeah, as long as I ball that first, I can die happy. No, 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 no. We're living in a time matter where some of us ain't got to taste death. You don't want that? Read on. Hey, that proves that it's only one way, man. Yeah. You try to come up some other way, you're going to be declared a thief and a robber. That's right. This is uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. Study to show thyself approved unto the most high. Mm -hmm. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, mm -hmm. rightly dividing the word of truth. Now, look at that word, rightly dividing the word of truth. Huh. This is that word, rightly dividing. And, uh, you want to say it? Yeah, put his ass to work. He's going to be a slave too. That sounds like a white boy. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Yeah, I couldn't have said that. Yeah. <laughs> Strong G 3718, and it says to cut straight, to cut straight ways, 
to proceed on straight paths, mm -hmm. holding a straight course equivalent to doing right, mm -hmm. to make straight and smooth. Equivalent to doing right mm -hmm. when you bring this word out. You see, not add, not taking away. Keep on. Yep. It says to make straight and smooth, to handle a right, to teach the truth. To handle a right, mm -hmm. to handle a right. You know what I'm saying? If you handle in these scriptures are right, then you realize that you can take yourself out of the equation because you're doing what the Lord wants you to do. You following the Lord's instruction. Our belly don't matter. You see? Some people's bellies do. Go ahead. It says to handle the right, to teach the truth directly and correctly. To teach the truth what? Directly and correctly. So that's what I'm saying. Uh, what's that precept of uh, uh, men that were moved by the Holy Spirit? That was in Peter, Second Peter. You know what I'm saying? It's another one of uh, uh, Psalm 68, 11. Okay. Pull that one real quick, Dr. Bashar. Go ahead, Bishop. Go ahead. Uh, yep, that was all of them. Okay, I'll read that last part again. Uh, it says, uh, to make straight and smooth, to handle the right, to teach the truth directly and correctly. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm That's what I'm saying, to teach the truth directly and correctly. It's only one way to teach the truth. You know what I'm saying? And that's the way... The, the, uh, the, the, the disciples who later became apostles That's the way they taught it You see Paul taught it the same way you can't, you, 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 Hebrews is out Paul is out Mark is out Luke is out God damn yeah, It's a strong one it? it says uh, To make a straight cut To dissect correctly mm. And the divine message Rightly divide Divine message See, this is a carnal message that's being taught. You know what I'm saying? But the divine message is the one that matters. The divine message is what you need to teach when that carnal message is brought out. You see? Psalm 68 and 11? Yep, this is uh, Psalm 68 and 11. The Lord gave the word. Great was the company of those that published it. So you that's see, and that's what, I, that's what I'm saying. So Paul is out. You don't know who wrote the book of Hebrews, so Hebrews is out. Right. Mark didn't walk with the Lord. Luke didn't walk with the Lord. Personally, right? They went right there by him to be able to touch it, so don't listen to them. But nigga, you wasn't there to touch it. Right. Yep. So what the fuck? Yeah. Published means to make public. All the apostles, you know, they were all about the confession of Yahweh Shah in the way that they taught the doctrine. Yahweh Shah was always at the forefront of the whole ministry. That's what I'm saying. Everything were related to, like I said, the law of Moses, the prophets, the Psalms, it's all concerning Yahweh Shah. He's the Messiah. You know? That's right. That's what I'm saying. But you, 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 you got other people that's talking about other shit. You know what I'm saying? Those, these scriptures don't matter. You don't got to worry about these. Bro, the word of God is in the Bible, but the Bible ain't the word of God? I know, right? That's confusion. Yeah. That's confusion. Yeah. They wrestling with the scriptures, man. You know what I'm saying? Matter of fact, get that one. Uh, rest with the scriptures, but get it in the NLT. That's the second Peter two. I got a precept. Go ahead. This is John chapter twenty, verse twenty nine. It says, "Yahweh shall say unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed." Hey, break it down. You got it. So you know these, these gang sayers talking about that certain brothers because they didn't walk with Yahweh Shah, and these men still believed in Yahweh Shah. And mm -hmm. Yahweh Shah himself said, "Blessed are those who haven't even seen me and believe." You know that's right. That's right. I got that in Second Peter. Come. This is Second Peter three and sixteen in the NLT. It says, "Speaking of these things in all his letters, talking about the matter of fact, I'm gonna start off." Mm -hmm. uh, Second Peter three and fifteen in the NLT. It says, and remember our Lord's patience gives people time to be saved. Mm -hmm. This is what our, our beloved brother Paul also wrote to That's you. Said. This is the head of the church talking about his beloved brother Paul. But you got Jacob want to rip all his pages out. Yeah, exactly. Right. You know what I'm saying? But they, they'll use Paul when they tell me he holds to shut up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But Paul just talking shit when he tell you, just... Don't prophesy with your head covered. He can say you can't cover your head. Right. You just can't do it when you prophesy on a brain. When they want some pussy out there, bitch, that they gonna talk about do benevolence in Corinthians, trying to push that. You know what I'm saying? Sisters. Yeah. You want you want you want to say you want to. That's what I'm saying. You conveniently not, use Paul. That's what I'm saying. You're not you you're not using it in sincerity and truth. You you scheming with it. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Yup. It says uh, Salak. Uh, 
this is this is what our beloved brother Paul also wrote to you with the wisdom that the Most High gave him. Speaking of these things in all of his letters, mm -hmm. some yeah. of his uh, comments are hard to understand, and those who are ignorant and unstable have twisted his letters to mean something quite different. You see that? You see that? That lack of understanding? You talking about something completely different than what Paul was talking about. Right. You know what I'm saying? They want to stone Jake for eating turkey and all kind of bullshit. Go ahead. <laughs> Just as they do with other parts of Scripture. Just as they do with other parts of the Scripture. So when the Scripture don't agree with you, you throw it out. Mm -hmm. I don't give a damn what Mark said. Why not? He was writing for Peter. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Come on now. Oh my goodness, man. Go ahead. Now, it says, and this will result in their destruction. That's what I'm saying, man. Repent. The doors of repentance are still open. You ain't got to like us. You got to listen to the Lord. How about that? Take us out the equation. We'll be a bunch of niggas. Look, we'll be scary. We'll be, we'll be whatever you want to call us. Listen to the Lord. Nigga, listen to what the Lord is saying. Go ahead. Because it was a little bit more on that John 20. Oh, yeah. Yep. It said, after he told that to Thomas, it says, and yet have, uh, so like it says, blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. It continues, John 20 and 30. And many other signs truly did Yahweh shine in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that ye, may, that ye might believe that Yahweh shine is the son, uh, is, is, is the Mashiach. The son of the most high, and that believing ye might have life through his name. Ooh. So you gotta read the scriptures yeah. so that you believe on the Messiah. He put just enough in there for us to have faith. Yeah. You know, as a matter of fact, read that in the NLT and then we can close out and let somebody else know that stuff. Yeah. Yep. John 20 and 30, it says in the NLT, the disciples saw Yahweh Shah do many other miraculous signs. That's what I'm saying. And, and when we when we read those things, we see the Lord. You see, it was written for our learning. It was right. written so we can have hope. You see? So when we read what was written down, we can see it. Right. So we see the Lord too. Even though we haven't seen him physically, the Lord said, blesses those that... He said, what was it, uh, Philip? Yep. You saw me, but they didn't, and they still believe. Thomas. Thomas, Thomas. yeah. Thomas. There we go. Go ahead. It said, that, uh, John 20 and 30 in the NLT... The disciples saw Yahweh do many other miraculous signs in addition to the ones recorded in this book. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. So when we read that word for, for, for martyrs, mm -hmm. they genuinely showed their belief on Yahweh and Yahweh by taking on a violent death. Let that sink in. They saw what they saw. And you had people trying to tell them that they, don't see, they didn't see that. They were like, well, shit, kill me then. Cut my head off. I, I, look, I'd rather, I'd much rather be with the Lord if y'all cut my head off than to be down here with you niggas. So do what you got to do. Go ahead. Yep. Verse 31. But these are written so that you may continue to believe that Yahweh is the Messiah, the Son of the Most High, and that by believing in him, you will have life. By the power of his name. That's what I'm saying. Somebody, matter of fact, we somebody get the the law of faith. You know what I'm saying? That, and, and that's the thing. That's the thing. It's enough written in the book for you to believe. That's why the Lord said he didn't believe on me as the scripture has said. Right. It's plain. I got the Romans, Romans 3. Yeah, the, I was I, I, I want to hinge on the law of faith. Since the Levitical priesthood is all about the laws, what about the law of faith? It said the law of faith, not the lack of faith. You see? When you heard these words, it wasn't mixed with faith. That's why you say I'm dumb as hell. Go ahead. Come on. Um, all right, let me uh, go ahead and get this. Romans chapter 3 and verse 27. It says, where is both? Hey, Sorry. We might have to close out. Oh. Go ahead. It says, where is boasting then? Yeah, it is excluded. By what law? Of works? Nay, but by the law of faith. Mm -hmm. Read that again. Right. This is Romans chapter 3 and verse 27. It says, where is boasting then? It is excluded. That's what I'm saying. You boasted in the Levitical priesthood. That's excluded. You see? Until you master the law of faith, you're not going to get the Levitical priesthood put in your inward parts. 
Right? That's what I'm saying. That 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 transition is gonna take place whether a nigga like it or not. Go ahead. Kanye says, where is boasting then? It is excluded. By what law? Of works? Nay, but by the law of faith. That's what I'm saying. The law of faith is what you need to be focused on. You need the whole book to master that faith. Right. Right. Yahweh Shah is the author and finisher of our faith. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Kind. Uh, if I can read that on the, in the NLT. Knock yourself out. It says, uh, can we boast then that we have done? This is Romans 3 and 27 in the NLT. It says, can we boast then that we have done anything to be accepted by the Most High? Because you can't, you can't boast in your, in your works to the Most High. You can boast in your works towards men and say, yeah, I did you know, this sacrifice. I did this and did that. But you can't boast in your works towards the Most High because you can't justify yourself towards the Most High. The Most High justifies us. That's right. It says, no, because our acquittal is not based on obeying the law. It is based on faith. It's based on faith, man. You know, your 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 your, your forefather Aaron would tell you, trust in your how about Shimmy how was shot. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? When Aaron was putting up those sacrifices, who was he putting up those sacrifices to? Right. Your how about Shimmy how was shot. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So look, hey, Lord willing, that was edifying. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The hopeful elect was uh, uh, enlightened. The two thirds, I hope it pissed you off. Go fuck yourself. It is what it is. You see? Rightly divide the word of truth, man. Fully set for the defense of the gospel. You can't defend the gospel if you snatch your pages out and run in your fucking mouth. Mm -hmm. So, with that, hey, we want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Rakakodash. Double honors to the apostles and elders at Great Millstone. Peace and blessings to the Aki teaching about the mind wide mouth. That's the sincerity and truth. Shalom. Shalom. Shalom.